Hi, Tom Cantrell here, president of Dakota's chapter of the Studebaker Drivers Club. I want to welcome you all to our car show this year. We're in downtown Custer once again, and we have a fabulous turnout. We've got 34 cars here, everything from a 1927 Studebaker all the way up to some of the last models produced. I'm Steve Brown. My wife and Pat and I own this uh, 37 Studebaker President Coupe. Uh, we've had this since 2008. We, we purchased it. Uh, we found the car in uh, Carson City, Nevada, brought it back and uh, totally dismantled it, put it back together. The engine was not available, and so we ended up uh, using a 66 Studebaker engine, which was actually a GM engine, and then we put in a 350 transmission so we can get it out on the road and drive it. And we've driven it about 18,000 miles. We've actually driven it to South Bend, Indiana, and back. Uh, we drive it uh, all the time. That's what they're for. And so uh, it's been a fun car. They only made 971 of these, and uh, a local Studebaker historian that we're friends with has told us there's probably only 10 left. I believe most of those are probably originally restored, but uh, they're, they're pretty rare. They're uh, originally a straight eight car. We enjoy coming out here to the Custer Meet. We're members of this club, and uh, we've been coming out here for quite a few years. Uh, got some other Studebakers we bring on occasion, and the Studebakers are just a lot of fun. My name's Kurt Hussey. I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. We have a 1957 Packard Clipper wagon. It's got a factory supercharged Studebaker 289. I got this car from my uncle that he had it since 1960. He got it for $13. A guy brought it into a shop to be repaired and um, didn't come back for it. So he got a sheriff's title for 13 bucks. And I, I bought it from him probably 30 years ago. Um, it was pretty much a wreck then. Most of the supercharger parts were all missing. We replaced them all, found them all, put them back in, and then redid everything from the ground up. I'm Julie Smorgowitz. Um, my husband Jim and I have this 1955 Studebaker Deluxe. We live kind of between Rapid City, Keystone, and Hill City. This vehicle um, we acquired about a year and a half ago, and it's the same make and model car that my father-in-law had as his first new car. And so all of his children, including my husband, came home from the hospital in a car just like this. And we've been having it restored over the last year and a half, and we hope to finish things up over the next year. And it's a really unique vehicle. It's the only vehicle with this hood style that was ever developed. Also the only one with the airplane design on the side of the vehicle as well. Um, so it's a pretty sweet car. It's also the first vehicle ever made with um, heated front seats. Um, there's actually a vent in the floor which pulls heat from the engine and then heats the seats in the winter. So it's uh, got some pretty unique advanced um, designs to it. We hope everybody enjoys the show this year and in future years. Um, it's really a great outdoor activity for the entire family. You have a chance to see some vehicles that are very unusual, very rare, and again, the advanced design of the Studebaker. So whether you're interested in cars or trucks or um, really antique vehicles, um, it's a great place to be. And Studebaker actually started with Conestoto Go Wagons back in the 1800s, so they were uh, around for a long time providing great transportation out to the prairie.
I'm Dick Dittman. I own this uh, 1960 Studebaker Lark 8 wagon. It was my mother's aunt and uncle's original car. Uh, they bought that in Brookings, South Dakota in November of 1959. This is the first year, 1960, of the four-door model. And in 59, they came out with a two-door wagon. This uh, has got a 259 V8 in it. It has been, as I say, in the family. And I kind of took it over before my dad died. And we did some mechanical work with my kids and some body work with my kids. And we decided to do it upright and... Uh, have it professionally done because it's once in a lifetime that you get to do this. We enjoy driving it. It uh, has no power steering. Well, all the power you got in your arms and no power brakes. You really have to stand on them. But it's got a uh, Positrack rear end. At the TT on the end, on the back end of the Studebakers stands for twin traction. The colors, I like the black, and my daughter that's over in Germany right now picked out the green. And we had this done at uh, one of the local body shops, Dave Jackson Auto Body Crafters. And it, it took quite a while, but it was worth every uh, amount of time that we did. I got done with this car in 2004, just in time for my daughter's wedding. I'm Tom Key and this is my wife Marlis. We own this Studebaker right now, this 59 Lark. We've only had it for a couple of years, but it's pretty much our pride with the three Studebakers we do own. We've got a 383 engine with an automatic transmission, and we really like to drive it, especially the reaction you get from the crowd. You can read their lips when you drive down the street. They say, what is it? And then somebody will say, it's a Studebaker. Most people don't know what Studebakers are anymore, but... A lot of people, as you can see here today, do. Our granddaughters rode in it one day, and they asked to roll the window down, and they couldn't figure out how to do it. They're used to pushing a button, and we had to explain to them to crank the window down. And they had no idea what that was. So it's totally changed in generations. We enjoy it. I've never seen so many Studebakers in one place in my life. But we really enjoy it. There's a lot of them here. My name is Dick Winbolt, and I'm from Longmont, Colorado, and I am a member of the Studebaker family. My grandmother's maiden name was Laura Mae Studebaker. She was sixth generation descendant of Clement Studebaker, one of the brothers that started the Wagon Corporation, and later on the automobile companies. That's my interest in the cars. Uh, my wife and I were passing through this area several years ago, and we saw a poster for the car show, and we said, boy, we should try to come up and attend that car show when it rolls around and we did and we've been coming up every year since and the club members have made my wife and I honorary members in this club and they ask us every year to present an award to someone who shows their car up here that we feel as though portrays the Studebaker family values honesty integrity loyalty heartfelt feelings of what goes on we like to see the fact that these people are spending so much time on these cars and preserving the heritage of the Studebakers. I'm Mary Miller from Gearing, Nebraska. Uh, I am a charter member of the the South Dakota chapter of the Studebaker Drivers Club. We founded this chapter in 1978, have been coming up here for Labor Day car shows for the last 40 years and uh, really enjoy it. As you can see, we have a very good turnout today. We have uh, people here from Alabama, 
Nebraska, Arizona. We've got Wyoming, Colorado. So there's a nice variety of vehicles. My name is Colton Lawrence. I live here in Custer and my Studebaker here is a 1959 Scotsman and the Alaskan camper that we have on it is a 1966. We just picked it up and I think it looks really good together and it is the first time having it this year at the show. Hello, my name is Christoph Keim. I'm from Sedalia, Colorado, and we drove our 63 Lark sedan up, and this is our, oh my goodness, 30th year participating in the uh, Black Hills meet. The car is a V8, three-speed with overdrive, and uh, actually came from a fellow Studebaker Club member from uh, Nebraska. And it's uh, a great driving little car, and the only problem with it is everybody asks me what year my Rambler is, and it's not a Rambler, it's a Studebaker. My name is Jim Rapp from Sheridan, Wyoming, and been involved in Studebaker. My mother and dad were involved with them as long as I can remember. That's how I got started with them. This car we bought, I don't know, 1999, something like that. Did just about all the work ourselves on it. it took 12 years to restore it. 1963 Studebaker Vani. It's got a standard transmission with a supercharged engine in it, 290 horsepower approximately. My name is George Cooper. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming, and lived there 57 years, and I was born and raised there. But uh, this is my car here. It's a 1934 Studebaker Commander. It does have some presidential items on it, such as the dual side mounts and stuff, kind of an upgrade. But, but uh, yeah, she's all pretty much all stock, other than the paint job has been new. It's been painted in 74, and uh, she runs nice. Got the original eight cylinder still in it, and three speed on the floor transmission, real smooth. Engine's never been out of the car, the way I understand. It was bought new in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and a guy from Rapid City bought it in 1972, and he had it, he painted it and from 72 to 74, and then uh, he had it for many years till last year, and uh, I bought it from him, so, and uh, kind of just did some trading on cars that he, he wanted from me. I got 16 cars total right now, but... Uh, but yeah, this is kind of a, a rare, definitely a rare bird. We both of us, we've never found another another coupe on YouTube yet of uh, this year of this stature and with this engine and stuff in it. We've never found one yet, uh, so it's kind of rare. The full leather interior in it and all that been nicely nicely redone. Other than the engine, it's still original. Still, it's never been out of the car. Never been torn apart. Never been rebuilt. Nothing. It's, it's just still running from the factory when they put it together in, in 1934 or 33. I'm Jim Hill. And we live in Colorado, but we come up here every year for the Studebaker get-together here. And this one I bought in Alabama. I bought it from a minister, and during the COVID, we even preached a sermon out of the back of the truck. It was manufactured in 1960, and then it titled us in 1961.
My name is Ryan Cameron. This is my daughter, Audrina Cameron. Hi. We're from Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, the vehicle behind me here is a 1927 Studebaker Victoria Coupe. It's got a standard six engine in it. Uh, the engine's actually never been rebuilt on it. The only thing that we've ever done on the engine-wise is reseal the water pump and rebuild the carburetor. Uh, the vehicle was restored about 34 years ago by my grandfather, Gerald Cameron. He picked the vehicle up from the Myrtle Museum. Uh, when he picked it up, the roof was caved in, the body had advertisement all over the side of it, and uh, for quite a few years, he tore it all down and rebuilt it back up as a uh, family heirloom. It's something that was passed on to me as a 18th birthday present of all things, and it's something that I hope to pass on to her someday. Uh, the vehicle itself has only about 44,000 original miles on it, so it's got very low miles, but uh, obviously it doesn't get driven very much. The engine, transmission, and differential are all numbers matching and original to the vehicle. And yeah, it's just, uh, just something we like to show and kind of bring some awareness to the community for Studebaker's developments and for what they accomplished back in their days. Uh, the locking mechanism in it is actually a Orville Hershey coincidental lock uh, from 1927, which is actually what most of the, today's modern locking systems are based off of. Uh, it's a mechanical design that locks out not only your steering column, but your ignition system as well. It was uh, built as theft proof in 1927, and I can pretty much attest to that because when the ignition switch went out on this thing, about the only way to get it fixed was to pull the whole dash apart and the steering column out just to fix it. So. It's about as theft proofed as it could get for that time frame and in today's standards. Next year we'll be here in the exact same location, Labor Day weekend, Sunday, Labor Day weekend, 10 to 3, right here in downtown Custer. So please, if you can come out in person, come on out and take a look at these cars.